Hello and welcome to Genie Vision. It's time for the top 10 countdown. No, this isn't a countdown of the top games available for the Sinclair Spectrum. Merely 10 games I think you should play. So let's get on with it. And the first game is The Adams Family, a 1991 release by Ocean. Of course, a big movie that year. It was a TV series uh, many, many years before that. Uh, at this time, you would have been familiar with the repeats of it, even if you hadn't seen the film. You've got this lovely intro on the specy. And you get to see all the characters. This is a 1 to 8K only game. Ocean's last game for the Spectrum and the CPC as well, actually. The plot of the game is basically the members of your family have been put all around your mansion, which is haunted, and you have to find all of them to rescue them. So there I am. I'm Gomez. And look, it's like a console game. But on a Spectrum, you jump on baddies to kill them or to jump up to other bits of the screen. Yes, it's very colourful, but colour clash tastic. But it's absolutely gorgeous and it's probably the closest you're going to get to the SNES style of game that was starting to be seen in the magazines even if you hadn't played them at this time Mega Drive games that kind of thing but on your home system and on the Amiga and ST it's not so much a big deal but on the Spectrum yes it is it's a taste of the future of 90s gaming on your Spectrum not going to move around here onto the second game and speaking of 1990s games then you will have certainly played Super Bomberman on the snares and later ported to the Mega Drive. But did you know it originated from a Spectrum game called Eric and the Floaters by Hudson Soft, who, of course, originated the Bomberman games? And yes, there you are. You run round, you lay bombs, and you've got to kill all the floaters, the baddies, on each level. It's a very simplistic Super Bomberman game, but on your Spectrum. And it's absolutely amazing and just as much fun as its counterpart, on the bigger systems. No, it doesn't have the power-ups or the two-player option, but you know what? It's incredibly enjoyable. Don't let the simple graphics put you off. Magic. If you say Codemasters, you think of the Dizzy games. Possibly the Seymour games as well, and the simulator games, but Slightly Magic was a game that came out in 1991 by Colin Jones, and it's a rather wonderful action adventure game and they go read the speed spell book collect the wand to gain your magic powers combine the spells with the matching objects to do everything you need to do right so there you are and yes it's incredibly colorful and looks gorgeous again a lot of color clash like the adams family but it's not a huge problem you have got to solve all the puzzles huge graphics and really really playable wonderful presentation gorgeous sound at least you've got a 1 to 8k spectrum and very, very logical puzzles. If you like the Dizzy games, then this is really a step up. And yeah, you can see there the colour clash is a little bit of a problem, but doesn't detract from the playability of the game. It's enormous fun, and it's an enormously attractive game. So polished, and a budget game to boot. As David Darling himself would say, absolutely brilliant. Back to the early days of the Spectrum, the game programmed entirely in basic, Mind Out by Quicksilver. Also available, I think, on the MSX and the Tandy Color or the Dragon 32, either or, can't remember which. Um, your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to basically go across this minefield and not get hit by the mines. If you're near a mine, you'll be told how many mines you're adjacent to. The keyboard layout is incredibly annoying, but if you can get around that, then it's jolly good fun in the same way Minesweeper on your PC is jolly good fun except this is much, much more tactical. You can never just dash across the minefield because the algorithm that lays the mines ensures there's never a straight path across the minefield. So you're constantly feeling your way around, trying to see how many adjacent mines you've got. And there, I'm dead there. And when you die, you get a replay, but you get to see where the mines are and where you messed up. So there, I messed up there. I thought there was a mine... To one corner and it was to the other side. And this is how you do it successfully. This is on replay. And there you go. I felt my way across the minefield. You can see there's no straight path. Actually, I say lie. Apparently the algorithm is supposed to... Oh, no, there's no straight path across from the entrance. So you can never go straight across from the entrance to the other side. But there is a straight path if you go left a bit and then straight on. And as you go to later levels, you've got different challenges. There's things that move around and you have to rescue damsels extra points it's a basic game and it looks like it but it is enormous fun 
Another ocean game, Smash TV. Not one of the most obvious games to play on the Spectrum, but one that's definitely worth a look. No, it lacks the two players of the 16 bits and the arcade. And yes, the screen is more compressed down. But it's enormously colourful and enormously fun on the Spectrum. And the thing is, once you get over those limitations, it's incredibly enjoyable. It's Smash TV on your Spectrum with amazing presentation and amazing playability. I wouldn't suggest you're going to get the same level of enjoyment you get out of this on the arcade version. But you know what? This is one of the games you need to play on the Spectrum because it's fairly late here. We're not one of the latest Ocean games or Spectrum games. But it just shows what could be done and just the kind of fun that you can have on this humble 8-bit. And back we go again to the early days of the Spectrum, although machine code this time, not basic. This game is Splat, where you've got to guide Zippy, the spider thing, through a maze. But you don't control which way the maze scrolls the the computer does and it does that at random and you mustn't hit the edge because you'll die and you just have to crawl your way around and try and collect as much of the grass as possible for extra point great game for high score challenges i played this on a forum many years ago against some other people and we all try to get the best score and the thing about this versus the c64 and the amstrad version is it's so much more playable the controls are a little bit twitchy i playing this on joystick but i don't recommend it keyboard is easier but it's so much smoother and better and it's incredibly fun and when you die it's only ever your fault it's amazing it's really good fun once you've scrolled around for a certain amount of time the level is over and you want to level two and the further levels have extra things you can collect such as plums and there's water and various things and no again one of the top games on the spectrum Advanced Tactical Fighter is by digital integration, but it's not a simulator. It's more of an arcade game with a terrain. It's based on one of the uh, the Advanced Tactical Fighter jet that was in development at the time. And yeah, wonderful presentations. I should be able to choose which sound system you want in the menu. I can't think of many games where you select 48k or 128k sound on the menu. And once you take off, what's special about this game becomes apparent. It's not a traditional fly in a straight line arcade game. You can go in any direction as you scroll around. And if you watch the map on the right hand side, you can see what I mean. There's a randomly generated terrain. Where the grass areas at the moment, you can go over white areas, which must be snow, yellow areas, which are beach, and blue areas, which are sea. So I have a yellow area now. There's various enemies chasing you around on that map. The world map changes every time you play the game wonderful presentation and enormous fun and a, almost a free roam what well, is a free roaming game on the spectrum you're armed with three different types of missiles and depending on what target you hit you impact the war on the ground or that's or rather than it's being fought around your rather deep game that for one that looks like a simple arcade game it's actually rather deep and as the title suggests it is tactical Robocop, probably the biggest selling game on the Spectrum. Number one in the charts for I've forgotten how many weeks. An absurd amount of weeks on the chart. Uh, best played on the Spectrum 1 to 8K because you get all this gorgeous speech. The public trust. Protect the innocent. Uphold the law. It's a game that became so well known that it's almost overlooked these days, especially because the Game Boy has a fantastic port as well. But the Specky is really where that version on the Game Boy began and it's enormous fun the graphics are very very clear it's very very precise in terms of where you shoot and enormous fun it's it's like an arcade game but of course it's not an arcade port this is an original home computer game that later was ported to the arcade i say it's very easy to forget about robocop because it's so well known but it's definitely a game that you need to play if you do have your Sinclair Spectrum out. Can't have this list without an ultimate game, but it's not an obvious one. We're playing Psst, if that's the correct way to say it. So your This Little Owl thing is an owl, I don't know what it is, and you have to use the spray cans to kill the bugs and baddies. Now, one of the spray cans will kill the bugs, 
one of them might stun it and one of them won't work at all and they they all the spray cans apply to different bugs and you have to protect the flower that's growing in the middle of the screen there so you protect the flower and then when it flowers that's the level complete so again you just need to get the right spray can so we need the blue spray can to kill these bugs level one is fairly easy or later levels you've got different types of bugs around you have to keep on changing between the spray cans but here on level one it's just these worm things so any second now hopefully the flower will grow or flower rather bloom got one leaf but there we go that's level one complete and you might think that seems rather simple if we go to level two and you'll have two different types of baddies around and you'll require different uh, spray cans so there you go that that spray can the blue spray can doesn't do anything with them so we need i've died there so i need to find a different spray can to kill these fluffy things and this this one fires that but that of course it only stuns the worms it's such a simple game but <laughs> it's incredibly addictive it's like the arc early arcade games enormous fun final game in the list uh, a Houston game and again not one of the usual ones it's impossible and have a look at this it's 3d with full perspective so things in the background moved in a different perspective to the things in the foreground if that's the right way of saying it and you have to collect the, the uh, cone things or sphere things whatever belts on those collect all of those whilst avoiding the spikes and the baddies and look at it it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful belts on there belts on there and then look everything moves in in just uh with the perspective it, it's just wonderful you look at it and they've they've had to work all the do all the maths and work all this out and it's an incredibly tough game level one is called nice and easy well i can tell you it isn't necessarily nice and easy but it just moves everything about this game is lovely it moves along at just the right speed the perspective works really well the graphics are really clear oh i just think it's marvelous so that's 10 games you need to try on your sinclair spectrum not necessarily the 10 best games but 10 games i recommend you take a look at the adams family is a slice of 90s arcade action on your spectrum and the last ocean game to boot definitely worth trying out slightly magic wonderful presentation yes it does have color clash but it's dizzy that's moved on a gear it's really nice mind out is a very very simple game but incredibly addictive don't be put off by the graphics it's really good fun smash tv no it's not the best port of smash tv it's not even the best way to play smash tv but it's a wonderful port for the spectrum so colorful and so much fun look past the limitations and you'll have a terrific time with this game splat the game where if you die it's nobody's fault apart from your own wonderful fun you always need to be one step ahead of where the computer is going to move the screen next it will be brilliant ported to the iphone but it's not so you're just going to have to play it on your specky advanced tactical fighter is a free roaming arcade flight simulator for your spectrum absolutely wonderful if you're fed up with shooters on rails for your spectrum then give atf a go robocop perhaps a predictable choice for this list but really is the pinnacle of spectrum gaming again it's an arcade quality game on your spectrum i can't fault anything about it at all Psst is a wonderful name for a game because you have to stay Psst. but again it's an arcade style game on your spectrum and not one of the obvious ultimate games it's really good fun and yes it doesn't have a huge amount of longevity but you've got some good chances some high score runs on this game i really enjoyed it impossible is so different I think it's visually stunning. It works so well and it is completely different from any other game 
I can think of. I just love that 3D perspective view and how everything moves at different speeds. Probably quite hard to program, but so well done and wonderful to bounce around that 3D view. And this, it's got good speed and oh, I just really enjoy it. So that's 10 games I highly recommend you check out on the Sinclair Spectrum. I apologize if some of those choices are a little bit predictable, perhaps Eric and the Floaters, but I don't think these are the 10 best games on the Spectrum. But I certainly, if I was putting a top 100 games on the Spectrum together, these 10 would certainly all be in it. And I highly recommend you check all of them out. <laughs> 